Welcome to the Storycraft Society. This week we're going to be talking about how to build this portal. It's a quick craft that should only take you one afternoon. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Garmin, and this is the Storycraft Society. This week is a pretty exciting episode for me because we're gonna be trying out a new series here on the channel, one that I've decided to call Quick Crafts. And the entire premise of this series is going to be quick crafts that you can knock out in one afternoon, and you end up with a cool piece of terrain on your table. And this week, we're gonna start with a super fun one. It's gonna be this little doorway portal. Not gonna talk much more. Let's just dive into knocking this thing out. Hey everybody, I just wanted to give you a heads up. I am trying to work out a new piece of audio equipment to make recording audio a little bit clearer and a little bit better on the channel. And honestly, when I filmed this video, it just, it turned out pretty bad. Please forgive me, the audio in this video is not gonna be the greatest. I think it's all clear enough that you should be able to hear everything that I have to say. Obviously, any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I will definitely clarify anything that isn't clear enough. It'll be better next week, I promise. Here we go. So I know I haven't done this in a while, but just to show off how simple of a project this truly is, I wanted to show off all the materials that you're gonna need. You need a hot glue gun, you need foam core from uh, the dollar store, the kind with the easy peel off paper. You need some kind of clear sealant, but you honestly could even do the step that we'll do with this with PVA glue if you wanted. This just makes a little bit more of a 3D texture. You need a paintbrush, an X-Acto knife, a tin foil ball, or some kind of tool to texture your foam to look like stone. You need your black Magic Craft base coat, some various craft paints, we'll get into that in a minute. And then the final thing that you're gonna need is this plastic sheeting. Just this clear plastic sheeting, you can get it out of basically any package that has this kind of stuff. That's it, this is all that we need, let's jump into it. So to start this off, we're gonna make a four inch by two and a half inch rectangle. This does not have to be perfect, in fact, I would encourage you to not make it perfect, but you just make that shape there. Uh, now that we have that cut out, we're going to make another one, but the next one we're going to make is going to be two by three. Peel the paper off of both of those. And then those are going to stack up like this. Next, you're gonna take and score a one inch grid into both of these pieces. You wanna cut through enough that you get a decent mark, but you don't wanna cut through so that it weakens the foam. So I know that's a pretty delicate line to balance. You just wanna do your best here, and the worst mistake that you can make is cutting it too thin. So err on the safe side and don't go quite as deep. Don't forget to do your edges. Then take your pencil and open all those lines. Now hit both of those pieces with the tin foil ball all over. That's going to get you your rock texture. So once you have that done, you could technically move on to the next step, and what that's gonna do is result in a newer looking portal. Like the wizard just constructed it, or it's a new piece that has been added to a lyceum or something like that. But I want this portal to look like a more aged portal, something maybe that the party would find in a ruin or a dungeon somewhere. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna start taking and cutting some cracks into the stone. And I, I do truly feel like less is always more in this kind of a situation. Another thing that you can do is take the side of your pencil and shade a section down a little bit. That'll make it look like it's kind of, you know, fallen down into the structure a little bit more. And then always make sure that after you finish this particular step, you go back over your lines just to make sure that the main tile lines are really uh, defined and clear. And there we go. Next, we're gonna take and glue these together with our hot glue.
Next, you're going to want to cut up and texture some bricks. The ones that I made happen to just be half inch by three eighths of an inch, but I'm going to take those, texture them up. You can do that using the rock tumbling method or the tinfoil ball that we were using earlier. And then now what we're going to do is do two stacks of them that stack up a total of five bricks. We're just going to use this center tile here as kind of my guideline. So the next step of the process is actually really simple, but it seems like it can be daunting. So what we're gonna do is start stacking up the bricks now, getting closer and closer to the top, but we're just gonna leave maybe a little bit less than an eighth of an inch, slowly working our way in so that each brick from the far outside edge is just gonna go a little bit closer each time to the center brick until they touch. Then once they touch, we're just gonna put in a little decorative cap, uh, taking the bricks and just maybe cutting them down a little bit until they go up to a peak. That's next, here comes a time lapse. All right, so next we're gonna pull out our plastic sheeting and we're going to line that up with the portal door that we've been making. And then we're gonna take a Sharpie and mark all around those edges so that the plastic sheeting doesn't stick out past our bricks, but it covers the entire opening. Once you have that done, then you're gonna take and go ahead and glue that down and you're ready to start laying down your next layer of bricks. Nothing fancy to this next step. All we're gonna do is go in and start gluing bricks down that will match this layer here. The only trick to it is you wanna make sure you aren't just gluing it down to the brick below it, but you wanna also make sure that you're gluing it into the wall also. Uh, that way it won't be a loose piece. All right, our project is really, really coming together now, which is awesome. The next thing we need to do on this is get it base coated. For that, we're gonna be using our Black Magic Craft Base Coat, which is a 50-50 mixture of black acrylic craft paint mixed with matte Mod Podge. We're gonna cover the whole piece, trying to be careful not to get it onto that clear plastic. If you get a little bit on there, it's not gonna be the end of the world, but you wanna do your best to avoid that. But once we have this thing all Mod Podged, then we are gonna get all the stone painted up. We're just gonna be using our three tones of gray, starting with a charcoal gray to a medium gray to a dry brushing of a light gray. That's gonna get the stone looking good. Uh, and then once we get to that point, then it gets to the fun part. We're gonna be working on the portal. But before we can do the fun stuff, we gotta get this stuff done. Let's go. All right, now that we have our stonework all painted up, it is now time to get to finishing this portal and making it look like some kind of arcane magic is coming through it. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to pull out our Lexel and we are going to just put a little dab into the front of the portal. And then what we're gonna do is take a toothpick or you could take a pencil point or anything that you want and just swirl that around to make all kinds of arcane swirls. You don't wanna go too, too thick with this, but what I like about the Lexel compared to PVA glue is PVA glue will dry and will still show some of those swirls, but it'll be real flat. Lexel will hold its shape so you get some of those really nice, big exaggerated areas and some areas are a little more subdued. All right, so now that we have our Lexel in place, it's gonna take a while for it to dry, but it's starting to look like cool arcane shimmer, and it really looks like some kind of magic is coming through the portal. Honestly, at this stage, I think that our portal could be done. At this point, if you wanted a newer looking portal with just kind of, just barely the glimmer of a little bit of something coming through there, I think this is a perfect place to call it, and just in a couple of hours, you have a really good looking piece that now can drop onto your table. I want this to look a little bit more kind of crazy. So the first thing that I'm going to do with this is I'm going to flip it over to the back side. And now this side doesn't have any Lexel on it. So I'm going to pull out some different colored paints.
there's just a little bit of a lesson in this. I messed with this a little bit more because I didn't like the way that it was looking off camera. And I ended up with this, which is something that I'm infinitely more pleased with. Don't be afraid when you're working on a project like this. If it doesn't look right, take the time to fool with it and mess with it until you get it the way you want it to look. That takes you a little bit of extra time, but then you're going to be a lot happier with the piece. Now we're going to move on to the final part of this particular build for me, which is going to be to make this look like it's in a ruin. So we're going to take a whole bunch of flock and start placing it all over the stones here and down on the ground. So here comes another time lapse and then we're going to be able to look at some glamour shots. Let's go. And there you have it, a super cool piece of terrain that only takes one afternoon to build. These are like my favorite projects in terrain building just because you see a result so quick uh, and it feels like just in a couple of hours you can end up with such a cool little piece that makes it onto your table for years and years to come. I love it. Uh, I definitely am excited to do more of these. I think I'm gonna try to release maybe one every month or one every month and a half, just because honestly, they're so fun for me to do and I enjoy it so much. If you like this content, definitely leave me a like down below and let me know in the comments section of stuff you would like to see me do in this series. Definitely, I have a few ideas of things that I'm gonna do just as the first couple of episodes go, but then it would be nice to know if there's something out there that I just wasn't even thinking about. I would love to hear it and then maybe incorporate that into a video in the future. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, definitely do that. That goes a long way to helping with the channel's metrics and all that stuff. And if you wanna know when our videos go live every week, which is noon Eastern Standard Time on Thursdays, definitely hit that notification bell so then you just always get to see more of my face. But until next week, you know I'll be wishing it was Thursday. I'll be seeing you.